Hello, and welcome to the BYU Family History Library webinar series. We're glad you could join us today. I'm Brian, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Please make sure your microphones and web cameras are disabled during the presentation to provide for a smooth recording. If you have technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box and I can address your concerns. You're welcome to use the chat box during the webinar for comments and insights. Our upcoming webinars are on Wednesday, May 13th. Um, that'll be with Susan Hoffman, Immigration and Naturalization Records from 1790 to 1945. As well as on Friday next week on the 15th, that'll be with Catherine Grant, Fixing Sticky Tricky Problems in Family Tree. If you'd like to access a previous webinar, please visit our webinar index on our website or search on our YouTube channel. All of our webinars are recorded and uploaded by the following Monday for your convenience. We also post links to recordings and other updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. For today's webinar, we are pleased to hear from Jeremy Minty, who will be giving a presentation on Utah Digital Newspapers. Jeremy is the head of Digital Library Services at the University of Utah's J. Willard Marriott Library. He works closely with the library's special collections to digitize, describe, preserve, and provide access to content through the library's website, Mountain West Digital Library, and, Di and Digital Public Library of America. He also collaborates with many institutions around Utah to make their resources available through the Marriott Libraries Digital Library and Utah Digital Newspapers. If Jeremy is ready, then we'll turn the time over to him. Great, thanks, Bryant. Let me quickly share my screen. So as Bryant said, I am Jeremy Minty, the head of Digital Library Services at the University of Utah's library. My department at the Marriott Library is responsible for the Utah Digital Newspapers Project. So I'm going to be sharing some information today about this project and how you can use it for family history research. During this webinar, I'll be talking briefly about each of the following topics here. First, I'll share some of the content that you can find in newspapers that is useful for family history research. Then I'll share a quick history of newspapers in Utah, followed by a history of the Utah Digital Newspapers Program, otherwise known as UDN. I'll then show you how you can discover some content that you are searching for in these Utah newspapers. And finally, I'll share some tips for searching digital newspapers, which can help you with searching UDN or other digital newspaper sites. So when we think about using newspapers for family history research, some of the most common things that we search for are birth, death, or marriage announcements. And while these are great to find in newspapers, I like to look beyond these basic pieces of information in the newspapers in order to discover more about our ancestors' lives and to learn about what society looked like during their lifetime. One good way to find that additional type of content is to look at other types of content that are often published in these newspapers. You will have your regular news articles, but you can also find a lot of other interesting details about people and society, such as government activities like court records, legal notices, tax lists, held mail, or military activities. You'll find a lot of community information, such as church activities, community events, school events, graduation announcements, or sporting events locally or nationally. You'll also find a lot of advertisements that can tell a lot about what is going on in the region during a specific time period. And those advertisements could include classifieds, personal ads, or business cards. And then I like to look at letters to the editor because they can give insight into what people thought was important in that area during their lifetime. If you're curious about the history of newspapers in Utah, I would encourage you to take a look at J. Cecil Alter's book titled Early Utah Journalism or the brief history of newspapers in Utah on the Utah Stories website. These will give you an overview of how newspapers across the state have evolved 
starting with the first issue of the Deseret News that you can see here from June 15, 1850. So less than three years after the first pioneers entered the Salt Lake Valley, they brought a printing press across the country and began the first newspaper, with many more small newspapers popping up across the entire state over the later decades of the 19th century. So over the past 170 years, we estimate that there have been nearly 600 different newspaper titles published in different cities and counties throughout the state, with all of them lasting for different durations of time. Some are pretty short, some have lasted since 1850. We've been able to locate either the original paper copies or microfilmed versions of many of these newspapers, but there are quite a few small papers that were printed for a short time where it appears that no copies are still in existence anywhere unless we get lucky and someone finds those papers in their attic. The height of Utah newspapers was in the early 20th century. And since that time, most newspaper publishers have either merged with other papers or else gone out of business and their paper stopped publication. Now in 2020, there are roughly 45 different newspapers still being published throughout the state. In addition to the large papers that you might first think of, such as the Deseret News, Salt Lake Tribune, or the Provo Daily Herald, there have been a lot of small newspapers targeting specific audiences, such as immigrant papers coming from several different countries who publish newspapers in the state in their native tongue, including Japanese, Greek, Danish, and Swedish. Or you can also find several small papers from the last half of the 19th century published by people who weren't members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they were trying to share their own opinions and ideas outside of the church-sponsored Deseret News. About 20 years ago, an idea was put forth that there should be a digital archive of all of the newspapers that have been published in the state. So in comes the Utah Digital Newspaper Project at the University of Utah. This project began with a small national grant in 2001, and then the first content was published online in 2002. Utah was one of the first states in the United States that really started looking into the mass digitization of newspapers. So we were able to help shape the framework for how other institutions across the country could digitize their own state's papers. We were also able to start UDN about four years before Chronicling America was created. So we were one of the first institutions to help get that project started at the Library of Congress. Over the years, we've been fortunate to partner with many libraries, archives, museums, newspaper publishers, and local governments around the state to be able to digitize millions of pages of these historical newspapers. This screenshot that you can see here is the UDN website as it initially debuted in 2002 with only about 30,000 newspaper pages from three different papers. And then here is what the UDN website looks like today. Currently on UDN, there are over 3.6 million pages from 172 different newspaper titles that are freely available for anyone in the world to access. For the past several years, we've been partnering with Ancestry and Newspapers.com to continue to increase the number of pages of newspapers from Utah that are freely available on this site. And through our partnership with Ancestry, we've been able to have them digitize nearly all of the Utah newspapers that are available on microfilm at the University of Utah and at BYU. So if you have been in the BYU Family History Library, You've probably seen the many, many rows of shelves like this one with thousands of microfilmed newspapers. Thanks to a partnership with the BYU Family History Library, we have had several projects in the past few years where we have boxed up large sections of this microfilm to take to Ancestry's offices in Lehigh to have them digitize these newspapers. After Ancestry digitizes all of the microfilmed newspapers, they are then adding that content to newspapers.com for all of their subscribers. And we are given a copy of all of these pages as well to add to Utah Digital Newspapers in the future. 
in our agreement with Ancestry, we'll be able to start adding all of this additional content into UDN in 22, so in about in 2022, so in about two more years. If you have a current newspapers.com subscription, or if you can get access to it when the Family History Library is reopened, you will find that there are now over 8 million pages of Utah newspapers available online there. So once we're able to start adding that content to Utah Digital Newspapers in the next couple of years, the size of our free newspaper site will more than double what its current size is. After working on the large project with Ancestry to increase the number of freely available historical newspapers pages from Utah, we're also looking at what else lies in store for the future of UDN. We hope to start focusing on making more current newspaper content available in the near future. We've been able to partner with a few publishers like the Park Record in Park City or Weber State University with their student paper, The Stein Post, to make their newspapers freely available up through about 2018 or 2019. We're also talking with other newspaper publishers such as the Salt Lake Tribune on how we might be able to get more of their recent content freely available on our website. Hopefully within the next year or two, we're able to start to make more of that content from current newspapers available, starting in about 2004 and going up through 2019 or hopefully some into 2020. We've talked with several newspaper publishers about doing this, and there has been a good response from many of these publishers around the state to be able to provide this additional access to their content. So now let's take a look at the Utah Digital Newspapers website. This is the homepage for the project that you can find at digitalnewspapers.org. Since we were one of the first states to start thinking about digital, digitizing newspapers, we were able to secure this domain name, which is easy to remember and discover the content. In the center of the page, you'll find the main search box where you can search the full text of all of the content that we have available on the site. This is a basic keyword search across all 3.6 million pages. So we've tried to make it similar to how you might search on Google. And then right under that search box, you'll see a link to the advanced search, which you can use if you want different options like searching phrases versus keywords, limiting the search to a specific date range or searching only specific papers. But from my experience, it's easier, easier to just use the basic search rather than the advanced search. And then you can limit the results using the facets that I'll show in a few minutes here. Along the top of this page, you'll find some additional ways to discover content in UDN. So that first link there on the left goes to the browse page. And on this browse page, you can select a specific county in the state either through the list on the left or the map on the right. Once you choose a county, it will give you a list of all of the newspapers published in that county that we currently have available in UDN. If you don't know which county the paper you're looking for was published in, you can scroll further down on this browse page to view an alphabetical listing of all 172 titles that are currently available. The next link along the top of the page there is called Paper Scanned. So if we click on that, it will take us to this page where you can find a list of all of the newspapers that we have digitized, sorted by county with a timeline showing what date range we have available for each title. One warning on this page though, these timelines show a bar graph starting with the first issue that we have in UDN and going through the last issue that is currently available. We've been working hard over the last couple of years to identify titles where we might be missing years or issues in the middle of these date ranges so we can fill in those gaps. But you might find other gaps that we have missed. So if you do find other gaps in coverage, please let us know by sending us a message through the contact link that's on the top of every page. Or with this contact link, you can send any other questions that you might have about Utah newspapers or this project. After you click on one of the newspaper titles on the left there on this pages, pages scanned page or the titles that were listed on that browse page, it will take you to a landing page for that specific title like this one. 
many of these paper landing pages will have some information about the title, like this example has a brief history of the Provo Dispatch that was published in the late 1800s before the Provo Daily Herald began. From here, you can do a basic keyword search of all of the text from that individual title. You can browse to all of the issues from that title published in a specific year, or you can browse all issues from the full newspaper run that we have available online in UDN. On the right side of these newspaper landing pages, you'll find some other options to search or browse only specific types of articles. When we first started adding newspapers to UDN, we were able to tag every article so we would know if it was a regular article, an advertisement, a birth announcement, wedding announcement, or an obituary. But over the last five years, we haven't been able to do that type of detailed processing since it became pretty expensive. So with the 3.6 million pages that are currently available on UDN, less than half of them, or only about one and a half million of these pages, have the detailed tagging to be able to limit the search to specific types of articles. As we continue to add more content to UDN, we'll soon get up to eight to 10 million pages in the next couple of years. This tagging will become even more irrelevant since it only applies to a small amount of the content. So because of this, I would not suggest that you rely on those search options and they'll most likely be removed from the website in the near future since they are a point of confusion for our users. Now let's go back to the homepage for UDN and just do a basic search. I'm going to search for my father-in-law's name, Giles Baum, then I'll hit enter. That will take me to this search results page. If you use any of the search options, such as the basic search like we did here, the advanced search or the options on each of the newspaper landing pages, it will take you to a similar page of the search results. This page shows me that the phrase Giles Bomb was found on 35 different newspaper pages. That isn't too many to look through, so I could just browse through each of these and see what I found. Or if I wanted less articles to look through, I can use the facets on the left side to limit the search results by a date range with the drop down years or date slider at the top, or I can limit the results to a specific newspaper title. When I click on one of these pages to view, it will then highlight wherever the search terms are found on the page, so I don't have to read the entire page to find the content that I'm looking for. The initial view once you get to this screen is of the full newspaper page. So you may have to use these zoom in and out buttons in order to read the text. Also on this page, you can download a PDF of that newspaper page with the file name, including the newspaper title, date and page number in the file name to help you form a citation. You can also share a link to this page on Facebook or Twitter with that share link or you can view the persistent reference URL that you could use in a citation. There are some other options here as well that you would find in a typical PDF viewer, such as doing another search within only that page, viewing the page as full screen, or sending the page to a printer. So now I wanna switch gears a bit and talk about some search strategies to help you discover content in digital newspapers. The discoverability of any of the content in digitized newspapers depends on a lot of factors related to the physical paper, as well as any microfilmed or digitized versions that you're using. Since the majority of content in UDN has been digitized from microfilm, the quality of the digitized page depends on the quality of the original paper copy of the newspaper the quality of the microfilmed version, the specs that were used when the microfilm was scanned, and then how recently those pages were processed. Technology today is a lot better than it was 20 years ago when we first started UDN. So we've been working to replace some of the older content with newer scans and newer search data. In order to make the scan pages searchable, we use optical character recognition software or OCR. 
to have the computer try to determine what the text says so it can be searched. So here's an example of what the hidden OCR text might look like for an article that is pretty clean and easy for the computer to read. You can see only a few minor mistakes in the text on the right, but overall you would be able to find what you want if you were searching for terms in this text about how to prevent the Spanish flu during the 1918 pandemic. On the flip side, this image here isn't as clean as the last one. So the OCR engine wasn't able to read the text as accurately and you'll find many more mistakes in the text which can make it more difficult when you're doing a search in that text. So after showing those last two newspaper examples, I wanted to do a quick plug for another newspaper project that I've been working on over the past few weeks to gather as many articles from Utah Digital Newspapers from the years 18, 1918 through 1920 that are related to the Spanish flu pandemic so we can compare those times with what's going on today. This collection can be valuable for family history research as well to be able to see what your ancestors may have been going through during these times and what you might learn from them that can help you during today's pandemic. So now I'm gonna share some tips to be able to search this type of newspaper OCR text as well as searching newspaper style content in general. So first you should try searching variant forms of names of people since newspapers don't always publish the form of name that you might use for that person. You should also remember in older papers especially, women oftentimes went by their husband's name rather than their own first name. So you might find Mrs. Giles Baum rather than Shirley Baum or her maiden name Shirley Ann Bancock. It's good to also search for various spellings or forms of a name or word, such as Robert, Bob, Bobby, R-O-B-T period, or even just his initials, since people may go by different forms of their names during different parts of their lifetime. Or for terms like baseball, the word could be included with no space, with a space, or with a hyphen. So you might try searching terms like this multiple ways in order to find all the results you're looking for. You should also try variant forms of terms. Since different time periods use different terms than we use today or different regions of the country even use different terms for the same concept like pop, soda, or Coke. This also applies to words that might not be politically correct today, but they were in common usage 100 years ago. The meaning of many words has also changed over time. So you need to remember to read these older newspapers in a historical context. For instance, the word cheater used to mean a trustworthy person who looked after another person's estate. Or the word nice at one point meant someone was ignorant or cowardly. So as you all hopefully know, newspaper typesetters weren't always using computers to create content like we do today. People had to manually set each character for each page, which creates the possibility for many typos or even shortened forms of words to be used. Since the typesetters also had to be doing all of their work in reverse, it was easy to mix up letters such as B and D or P and Q. Then with this old text that might not be the best quality in the original newspaper, doing OCR on that text adds in even more potential errors since the computer might read some similar letters incorrectly. So if you have a name like Olson, O-L-S-O-N, the typesetter or the OCR engine might misspell it with an E-N or an A-N at the end. To help with those types of issues, you can use wildcards like the question mark or asterisk to be able to replace one or more characters with any character and then be able to retrieve search results for multiple forms of the name with only one search. But when you do this, you need to be careful so you don't make the search too generic. For instance, if I search cat, C-A-T asterisk, I will find all items with, that have the word cat, cats, catalog, caterpillar, category, cathedral, catch, Catholic, Catherine, catapult. I'm sure we could come up with many other words that start with C-A-T. 
So you might get many more results than you intended if you use this type of search. You can also do what is called a proximity search, where you're saying that you want to find the two words within a set number of words of each other. So in the example on the bottom, the search for Giles Baum without any quotes would find any newspaper page that has those two words anywhere on the page without having the words anywhere close to each other. The next one, Giles Baum in quotes, would mean that these two words have to appear right next to each other as an exact phrase. And then Giles Baum in quotes with the tilde three after it means that the first and last name have to be within three words of each other on the page. So that last search would then find phrases like Giles Baum, Giles Gordon Baum, or Giles and Shirley Baum. Well, at the beginning of this presentation, I showed you how you can search the content of one particular paper or find papers within one particular county in the state. But when you first search, begin searching for a person or a topic, I would recommend that you start the search more widely since people moved around a lot and papers from other counties or cities published a lot of content from outside of their region. One example of this is another project that I'm currently working on. With that project, I've had newspaper, newspaper articles published in the Deseret News and Salt Lake Tribune, as well as appearing on the news on KSL, ABC4, and Fox 13. But then I found out that a new station in Kansas picked up the story and published an article about that based off of the articles from the Utah news outlets. Even though I have never lived in Kansas and the project has nothing really to do with that state. So you might find content about people you are searching for in places that you would never have imagined. Since we're constantly adding new content to UDN, it would be a good idea to rerun your searches periodically since you might not find things one day, but then new content is added and the source you are looking for is now available the next week, next month, or even next year. With that, don't believe everything you read. I'm sure you all know we live in a time of fake news where anyone can share any sort of news on social media, whether or not it's true. This really isn't something that's new, since you can look at many historical newspapers and find many examples of fake news that ended up spreading rumors and false information. So be careful with what you believe. The final tip here is to experiment. Since the text from every newspaper can be a little bit different than the last one that you may have looked at, you should try several different ways to search for each topic with no real perfect way to do every search. So just keep trying. One common question that we receive about newspaper content in UDN is whether or not people can add articles to sites such as Family Search or Ancestry. In order to figure that out, you need to look at the right statement that is included with each item in the collection. In order to find the right statement for each item, you can just scroll down on the web page where you're viewing the newspaper page. Below the image is all of the metadata that we store for each issue and every page in UDN. So here are two examples from the Provo Daily Herald, one from 1922 and one from 2002. On the 1922 example on the left, you can see that the right statement says no copyright United States. So that means that according to US copyright law, that newspaper is not in copyright and you can share it freely without needing any permission to share it. On the 2002 example on the right, the right statement says in copyright and then the rights holder field below that says Herald Communications, Provo, Utah. So you know that this item is in copyright and you also know who holds the rights to it. So if you find that right statement and you don't that means you don't automatically have permission to share the item on other sites. But if you wanted, you could contact that rights holder to request the rights to publish the item somewhere else. For all items that you find marked as in copyright, the Marriott Library has received written permission from the publisher to put it online in UDN, but then individuals would need to make their own request to use the content on other sites. 
as you might know, content published before 1924 in the US is in the public domain, but that doesn't mean that all content published after 1924 is in copyright. For newspapers, the majority of content up through about 1963 is not in copyright. And many papers have content that even goes up through the 1970s that's also not in copyright and can be freely shared. So for the 3.6 million pages we have in UDN, a little over 75% of these pages are not in copyright and can be shared freely. So in this presentation, I've been focusing on discovering newspapers using Utah Digital Newspapers. You can also find a large amount of free newspaper content on the Library of Congress's Chronicling America site. Since Chronicling America has strict guidelines on how content is added to their site, there's usually only a relatively small amount of content from each state. For instance, Chronicling America has around 380,000 pages of Utah newspapers, while UDN has 3.6 million pages and will be doubling in size in the coming years. You can also find a lot of other free newspaper resources similar to UDN from nearly all 50 states like these examples here. All you need to do is Google the state name and digital newspapers, and you should be able to find all of these types of sites for each state. With these state newspaper projects, you can usually find many more newspaper pages from each individual state that isn't available in Chronicling America. So that's my overview of Utah Digital Newspapers and how you might be able to use this site and search for your ancestors for your own family history research or when helping others. And with that, I'll throw it back to Bryant for any questions that may have come in. Thanks for the presentation, Jeremy. Um, if there's any questions from the audience, please post them in the chat box and uh, Jeremy can answer them for us. All right, looks like we have a question uh, from John. It says, you indicated that 3.6 million will become 7 million in a couple of years. What are you adding? So with the 3.6 million pages that we have currently available online, if you are able to go to newspapers.com and see every newspaper from Utah that they have, you will find all of the new content that we will be adding to our project. So with the 7 million or so pages that we'll have, I think that includes around 300 different titles from throughout the state. So that's nearly all of the big titles. Some of the big papers that we will be adding is like the Salt Lake Tribune from when it first began in 1871. I believe we have that currently in UDN through about 1900, but we'll be able to add that up through about 2015. For the Deseret News, we'll be able to add that up through 1963. We already have the Provo Daily Herald up through, I think, 2009, and we hope to expand that to 2015. But then there's also a lot of other smaller papers from the entire state. So we have papers from every county where papers have been published and from every city. So we should have nearly every newspaper that still exists in Utah within the next couple of years on the site. Great. Um, and also, Judith asked, would you repeat the part about other states' digital newspapers? Yeah, so here's that slide. So this shows, what, maybe eight or nine different states that have newspaper sites like this. So if you search for any of these newspaper collections, if you search for Texas digital newspapers or Missouri digital newspapers, you'll come up with these web pages here where they have also provided free newspaper content for their state. Most of these statewide programs begin by having that state participate in Library of Congress's Chronicling America project with the grants that the Library of Congress and the National Endowment for the Humanities gives for those projects. You can digitize around 100,000 pages per grant. So then usually after individual states have done those projects, they'll continue on with their work, digitizing their state's newspapers. And then that content, that additional content that they digitize outside of Chronicling America would be put on these individual sites for each state. 
Great, thanks, Jeremy. I think that answered the last question too as well. Okay, so, great. Awesome, yeah. If there's no more questions, then yeah, thanks once again, Jeremy, for presenting uh, for us today. And we just like to remind everyone about our uh, upcoming webinar on Wednesday next week. That'll be um, Immigration with Susan Hoffman on the 13th. And also on Friday next week on the 15th, we have one with Catherine Grant as well. So make sure to join us for that. Thanks for joining us today and we hope you have a great day.